This round was really about the future of the industry. Uh, we have uh, three plants that were vulnerable, and if we didn't find a way to shore them up, um, we would be naive to believe that somehow, four years down the road, when the market is not in as good a shape it is now, that we would have you know, been able to save the plant. Capital is pulled around the world, so literally countries and communities are fighting for investment, and Canada is no different. We were fighting this round for our share. Back in, in 1999, with the demise of the auto pack, where investment would be secured uh, through government regulation and intervention, where in fact we had to secure the investment. And that's exactly what we did in 2016 bargaining. There's a lot of priorities when you go into negotiations. I mean, we had a lot of members at, the, at, uh, at that hiring grit, which was important to take care of them. Our legacy members hadn't had a pay increase in nine years. But the key thing for us was solidifying the footprint here in Canada. We are not going to ratify an agreement with General Motors under any circumstance unless there is a commitment to our facilities. We made that decision as master bargaining committees, as a whole auto council, and we were determined. And the companies knew we weren't bluffing. So they were in a situation now where they had to find a solution or the risk of a strike was real and it would have been severe and significant. So GM understood that we had a lot of power in our St. Catharines plant. And our leadership at St. Catharines and our members at St. Catharines were prepared to fight to make sure that our members in Oshawa um, had, a, had a bright future. So it's that type of solidarity at the bargaining table that convinced General Motors that they made it better make a move and they better do it now. So there was a lot in play, but there was no question. They knew. They knew unequivocally by everything we were saying that there was going to be a fight if there wasn't an investment. They had to size it up. They understood we weren't bluffing. They made the investment. No sign-offs missing, we're good? No one's good? Good. The only sign-offs that are missing are the ones that you got. Okay. When you think of Detroit 3 bargaining, within our union and outside of our union, everybody immediately thinks of pattern. So pattern bargaining is the one tool that we have um, outside of our ability to strike that ensures that we're getting fair collective agreements with all three and the ability to ensure that the bargaining committees are not being whipsawed amongst each other. You pick a lead, that lead establishes what the pattern is. Every one of the companies looks a little bit different, so the pattern isn't exact, but from an economical perspective, uh, the dollars and cents are basically uh, exactly the same. And uh, again, I think it's a fair way uh, to be able to keep everybody, uh, so to speak, on the same page. Rank and file support during negotiations has to be the number one priority. It's critical. The support by our rank and file members was extremely huge. They, the, the corporations understand that they can't divide us and conquer. Um, incredible support from our rank and file. They're on the bridges, letting people know that Oshawa wasn't giving up without a fight. And uh, I think they were probably the key to our success in bargaining, to be honest with you, because General Motors seen it every day, three times a week, four times a week. We weren't going away. Without rank and file support, uh, without rank and file believing in their leadership, I don't think we'd ever be able to get to where we are today because uh, they're really what make us. At this point, there is no predictable time that I can advise that there will be a media conference to make a formal announcement. I'm not taking any questions uh, and that's all I can say at this moment. Uh, in 2016 bargaining, every single set of bargaining, GM first, Fiat Chrysler second, Ford third, went right down to the wire. and. Uh, you know, it, uh, it, it, it's tough for everybody. You are five minutes away from making a decision about whether or not you are going to take out literally thousands of members out on strike and understand the potential impact, good or bad, that can have on our members and our families. I am pleased to announce to our members of Local 222 in Oshawa that we have found a solution for your facilities. And on behalf of our members of Local 1285 at the Brampton Assembly Plant, Fiat Chrysler is committing $325 million in order to rebuild the paint shop in Brampton. And I'm here today to announce that we have one a major engine program from Ford. Well, you never achieve 
everything that you want to achieve. Uh, the important thing is to achieve what you need to achieve. It was a very successful bargaining. We, we did involve our members more than ever before. I think one of the biggest gains we made in this bargaining was that for the first time the public was on our side, was really on our side and wanted the industry to succeed. We never ever considered a plant closure as an option. And I think that was very good strategy right from the beginning from Jerry that said we're not, there's no, there's no way we'll be on strike if we don't have product. And, uh, and at the end of the day, we achieved our goal. So now it's the time for us to take the next step. Time for the governments to get involved, get involved in an aggressive way. So now it's about turning back the hands of time and starting to build this industry, which is so important for Canada.